Here we are asked to solve the initial value problem. This differential equation turns out to be a linear first order differential equation. And of course there is a certain method for solving such equations. We've outlined that method in this blue box here. And we can see that the first step is to make sure that our differential equation is in a so-called standard form. And in a standard form, we're gonna to have to have dy dx plus some function of x multiplied by y which is equal to another function of x. So what we'll do is come over here and rewrite our differential equation just a little bit so that we can kind of prove to ourselves that it is indeed in the standard form. So we're gonna rewrite this as dy dx plus negative one over x multiplied by y. And then that's gonna still equal x times e to the x. Let's again ensure that this is in standard form. So we have our dy dx right here, and then we have the addition of some function of x. That's the p of x in the standard form, so we've got that. Notice p of x is multiplied by y, and that's what we have right here. And then this is equal to some other function of x that they just label q of x. So indeed, we have it in a standard form, and step one is therefore complete. We can move on to step two or b and it says to calculate the integrating factor now you can see to do that you're going to raise the base e to the integral of your p of x with respect to x so let's recall that our p of x is equal to negative one over x and therefore the integrating factor which we just call mu or mu of x will equal e raised to the integral of negative one over x dx. And what we're going to need to do is simplify this integral, or I guess evaluate that integral. Let's do that on the side here. So the integral of negative one over x dx, we can factor out a negative one. So you'll have negative integral of one over x dx, which is essentially equal to the negative of the natural log of x. That's an old integral from calculus two, you probably have learned. So here we can see that the integrating factor mu of x is equal to e raised to the negative ln of x. Then what we do is utilize some properties of logarithms to simplify this. Remember we have a negative one in front of this ln of x and also recall that you can use the properties of logarithms to rewrite this as e raised to the ln of x to the negative one. So basically the negative one moves into the exponent position of x. And what's convenient about that is that we have some inverse functions canceling. We have the exponential function, the natural log function, they cancel out. This shows us that mu of x is equal to x to the negative one, which is the same thing, of course, as one over x. So there it is, our integrating factor. We have determined what it is. We can move on to the third step. and We need to multiply the differential equation in standard form by mu of x. So here we go. We're gonna take our standard form differential equation and we are going to multiply both sides of it by, well, one over x in this case. There we have it. Now, the left side gets repackaged. If we go back and look at the steps, it says, recall that the left-hand side is just the derivative of the integrating factor times y with respect to x. So let's try to parse that a little bit. The derivative of the integrating factor, which was one over x times y, and then that is with respect to x. Now, to help us understand why this works, you may, as an exercise, want to calculate the derivative of this product here. You would have to do the product rule. So basically, if you did that, the product rule would say, okay, take your first function, one over x, and multiply it by the derivative of y. So you would have one over x times dy dx, which is what we have right there. And then, continuing the product rule, you would add the y times the derivative of one over x. The derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. So again, you would have y times negative one over x squared. That's exactly what you have over here. You have y times negative one over x squared once you distribute that one over x. So that's just a brief 
discussion of why we can sort of repackage the left-hand side into the derivative of the product of the integrating factor and y. So it does indeed work, and then over here on the right-hand side of the equation, we can see hopefully that this x and that x, one being in the numerator, the other in the denominator, will cancel out. This will just give us e to the x on the right-hand side. So that's pretty good. Then the next step, if we continue following through here, it says to integrate that last equation and solve for y. So now we're going to integrate. And technically, you kind of have to move the dx to the other side, but it doesn't really matter. You're going to integrate both sides. You can just do it like that. And what happens is the integral and the derivative right there are kind of like inverse functions too, and they cancel each other out. So that just leaves you with 1 over x multiplied by y. On the other side, the integral of e to the x with respect to x is e to the x. And then don't forget your constant of integration here. So right now, on the left side, we essentially have y over x is equal to e to the x plus c. Again, we can solve this for y. We can multiply each term by x, just like so. On the left side, the x's will cancel. So now, of course, we have y equals x e to the x plus constant times x. Because the question gave us an initial condition, we can actually solve for the constant. They tell us right here that y of 1 is equal to e minus 1. Let's write that down. y of 1 equals e minus 1. So what that means is you're going to be plugging 1 in for x, so all of those, and then you're going to be plugging e minus 1 in for y. So here we go. We'll plug in the initial condition. e minus 1 equals 1 times e to the 1 plus c times 1. All those 1s look a little funny there on the right side, so it's really just e plus c. And if you subtract e from both sides of this equation, you would see that c is equal to negative 1. And therefore, your final answer will be this equation, y equals x times e to the x. Now you're going to have plus c, so it's going to be plus a negative 1 multiplied by x. That looks a little funky. We can simplify that to just y equals x e to the x minus x. That is the correct answer to the question.